today we will go for insulin release okay so there are several factors or compounds which promote insulin release from beta cells of pancreas some of them are glucose major one amino acid also promote release of glucose okay such as leucine arginine glutamate and many more fatty acid uh, free fatty acid okay incretins incretins are gut hormone gut hormone they also promote release of insulin from beta cells of pancreas some other hormone such as growth hormone glucagon cortisol prolactin and some steroid also promote release of insulin and the drugs or medication which are available in the market they also induce release of insulin in today's class we will discuss about the role of glucose the role of gut hormone in proteins and the role of drugs okay to release the insulin from beta cells of pancreas okay let's start from the role of glucose how glucose promote or how glucose works in beta cell to release the insulin for this i have to draw here structure of beta cell okay so suppose this is beta cell of pancreas suppose this is beta cell of pancreas It has got glucose transport here. Suppose this is glucose transport, or uh, we can call it glut two. It can be present anywhere, but right now I am showing at this point glut two transporter is present on the beta cells of pancreas on the membrane of beta cells of pancreas. Okay, and the beta cells of pancreas also contain ATP sensitive potassium channel. Suppose this is what ATP sensitive potassium channel. Okay. and it also contain voltage gated calcium channel suppose this is voltage gated calcium channel so glut 2 is present on beta cell membrane it is a transporter glucose transporter 2 and atp sensitive channel is also present here on the beta cell membrane and voltage gated calcium also present on beta cell okay now let's talk when glucose come to the beta cell how things happen okay suppose if we consume food in the form of carbohydrate the carbohydrate is digested in our body or intestine to give glucose okay now this glucose get absorbed in the circulation and 
and when the concentration of glucose is increased in circulation, it will come to the beta cell. Alright? And in beta cell, there is glucose transported through. It carries the glucose inside the beta cell. In this way, by the help of glucose transporter, to glucose entered inside the beta cells of pancreas. Now, what happens is that glucose now undergo the process known as glycolysis and PCA cycle. PCA cycle. Okay, to generate the energy in form of A. Glucose comes inside the beta cell. Now it generates ATP. Okay. And this ATP now facilitates the closure of ATP sensitive potassium channel. That means ATP now close this channel. Close. Right? When this channel gets closed, now the potassium cannot come out of the cell. This potassium cannot come out of the cell. And the concentration of potassium get increased inside the cell. Okay? When potassium concentration get increased inside cell, it causes depolarization of the membrane. Depolarization. And subsequent activation of This body is getting calcium channel. Alright, I repeat the process. ATP facilitates closure of potassium channel, ATP sensitive potassium channel. Now, this channel gets closed, which causes increased potassium concentration inside the cell. Okay, followed by depolarization. Now, this depolarization causes substitute activation of body is getting calcium channel. Now, this channel open up. Right? And when voltage gated calcium channel open, there will be influx of calcium inside the cell. Calcium now entered inside the beta cell. Okay? Now this calcium will activate protein kinase C. Alright? And the protein kinase C ultimately act on secretory granules which contain insulin and now they propel this granule toward the cell membrane and ultimately this granule get fused with cell membrane and insulin get released in circulation by the process known as exo Okay, so in this way, first glucose comes inside the beta cell through glute 2 transporter. It undergoes the process glycolysis and PCA cycle to generate ATP. Now, this ATP will close the ATP sensitive potassium channel. Then, potassium concentration will increase inside the beta cell. Okay, followed by depolarization of cell membrane of beta cell which causes activation of voltage gated calcium channel. Right? Then can calcium influx inside the beta cell activate the protein kinase C and ultimately protein kinase C will act on secretory granule to release the insulin from the beta cell by process known as exocytosis. Okay? Now let's elaborate this portion. How calcium act inside beta cell or function or activate the protein kinase C ultimately to release the insulin. Okay, let's see here. Suppose this is calcium which comes inside beta cell. Now it will activate the enzyme known as phospholipase C inside beta cell. Okay, now this phospholipase C will hydrolyze. 
PIP2 that is phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate okay it will hydrolyze PIP2 to give IP3 IP3 and diacyl phenicillin DAC okay I repeat the process calcium when come inside the beta cell it will activate the enzyme phospholipase C now this phospholipase C will hydrolyze PIP2 phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate to IP3 inositol triphosphate and diacyl phenicillin and this diacyl phenicillin now will activate protein kinase C so it convert inactive protein kinase C to active protein kinase C ok and this protein kinase C have got number of function inside this beta cell ok because it first activate or reorganize the actin protein inside the beta cell the number one function is the protein kinase C reorganize or rearrange the actin protein inside the beta cell and it also activate exocytotic protein ok exocytotic protein such as mu 80 snap 25 they are exocytotic protein so this protein kinase C also activate this exocytotic protein and ultimately all this process propel this secretory granule toward the cell membrane and allow the granule to fuse with cell membrane and ultimately exocytosis happen to release the insulin ok so uh, this is how the glucose act in beta cell to release the insulin ok now let's discuss about uh, role of in creatines alright role of in creatines in creatines how in creatines work to release the glucose So, in creatines, first of all, we should know about in creatines. Okay? So, in creatines are gut hormone. Gut hormone. They are gut hormone. Produced from intestine. Alright? They also get secreted after food intake. So, after when we consume the food, then only insulin gets secreted from the small intestine. Alright? So, Generally, let's see here. Suppose if you consume food, carbohydrate, basically, the glucose is generated from carbohydrate after digestion. Okay? Now, this glucose comes to the well. The carbohydrate get digested to give glucose in small intestine. Alright? Suppose this is small intestine. Alright. So when glucose come, now it stimulates the cells of the small intestine, such as K cell, L cell. And this K cell will secrete the ingredient known as GIP. Okay? And the L cell will secrete the ingredient known as GLP1. Alright? So the thing is that when you con consume the food, containing carbohydrate, the carbohydrate digestion produce glucose ok and glucose in small intestine uh, glucose stimulate the cell or to produce the ingredient known as GIP and GIP 
द के सेल प्रोड्यूस जी आई पी गैस्ट्रिक इनिबिटरी पेप्टाइड ओके एंड द एल सेल प्रोड्यूस जी एल पी इंटेग्रल लाइफ पेप्टाइड एंड बोथ आर नोन एज इनक्रेडिंग दे आर गट हार्मोन और गट पेप्टाइड राइट एंड दिस के सेल एंड एल सेल्स आर जेनरली कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड अराउंड ड्यूडेम ओके सो जी आई पी मीन्स गैस्ट्रिक इनहिबिटरी पेप्टाइड एंड दिस जी एल पी मीन्स इंटेगोन लाइक Now let's see how this insulin acts to release the insulin from beta cells of pancreas. Okay, so the beta cell have got receptor for this insulin also. Suppose this is the receptor inside the, uh, on the cell membrane of beta cell, and the receptors are G protein coupled receptor. They are G protein coupled receptor. Okay, G means G protein coupled receptor. Okay, so beside this receptor, there is enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase (AC). Near by the receptor, adenylyl cyclase is present. A C means adenylyl cyclase. Okay. So when insulin get produced from beta uh, from the small intestine, then it come and can bind to the receptor on. and when they bind to the receptor g protein receptor on beta cell the adenylyl cyclase become activated this ac adenylyl cyclase become activated and it converts atp to cyclic amp atp to cyclic amp inside the beta cell this also convert atp to cyclic amp inside beta cell cyclic amp okay and this cyclic amp will now activate protein kinase a and this will ultimately or finally act on this secretory granules containing insulin to release the insulin from the beta cell by process known as exocytosis So, through cyclic AMP, there will be activation of protein kinase A. But here, in case of glucose, through calcium, there will be activation of protein kinase C. Okay. So, let's see once again. In presence of glucose, small intestine produces insulins, which can act on beta cell through G protein coupled receptor, and finally. Uh, they generate the cyclic AMP from ATP, and cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A, which helps or which act on insulin granules or secretory granules, and finally insulin get release and uh, get released from beta cells of pancreas. Okay, so this protein kinase also got number of function inside beta cells of pancreas. The number one function is this protein kinase A can act on ATP sensitive potassium channel, and it will close this channel again. The same process happens to release the insulin. Number two, the protein kinase A can activate the voltage gated calcium channel, and again same process happens. Calcium will influx inside the cell, and it will ultimately release the insulin. This protein kinase A can activate some exocytotic protein, which helps in exocytosis. 
Okay. Also, this protein kinase A can mobilize the calcium from cell organelles to the outer compartment. And ultimately, it will increase intracellular calcium, which helps in release of insulin. Okay? Alright. And in creatines, one thing you must know is among both in creatines, GLP-1 is responsible for most of the incretin effect. Most. Right. Okay. Among both, GLP-1 is responsible for most of the incretin effect. Right. And after their function, the incretin are or can be degraded by enzyme known as di peptidyl peptidase 4 or DPP4. This enzyme act on incretins to degrade incretin. Okay? After their function. Alright? By looking at this, one thing you must understand is if we consume glucose orally and if we provide glucose intravenously, intravenously, the oral glucose administration will secrete or generate more insulin in our body more insulin than intravenous administration. Why? Because of incretin effect. Incretin effect. I repeat that if you consume glucose orally and intravenously, the oral glucose administration will release more insulin because of incretin effect. Okay? Now finally, let's talk about drugs. After incretin, drugs. How drugs promote release of insulin. Alright? In market, there are numerous drugs available. Diabetes drugs. Diabetes. Sulfonylurea. Sulfonylurea have got receptor on ATP sensitive potassium channel. Okay, so this group of drugs act on ATP sensitive potassium channel and they close this channel and ultimately potassium will increase inside the cell and this is this will follow the same path. To relieve the insulin. Okay? So, example of these groups of drugs are Gliven, Clamide, Glimepride, the another drugs in the market, Glynise. The glanates have also got receptor on ATP sensitive potassium channel and they bind to the receptor near to the receptor of sulfonylurea. Okay, both have got receptor here on ATP sensitive potassium channel. Alright, but the difference is that the glanate binds quickly to the receptor, binds quickly. The affinity is low. And another thing is that it works for short duration of time. Short duration of time. Okay? And it also binds here, close this potassium channel, 
cause depolarization, and same thing happened to release the tension. Another drugs we can find in creatine mimetics. In creatine mimetics. These are the drugs which copy the action of these incretins. Okay? They work like incretins and ultimately helps to release the insulin from beta cell. Example is Exinam. Finally, we have metformin in the market. Metformin. And this metformin doesn't bind to the receptor. But it increases sensitivity of this insulin. So metformin increase, increase sensitivity of insulin. Now insulin is more potent in the action in presence of metformin. Okay? So metformin also decreases glucose absorption from this one this drive. Glucose And metformin also decreases hepatic glucose production. Hepatic glucose production. And all these things will ultimately decrease the glucose from blood. Okay? So friends, this is all about insulin release from beta cells of pancreas. Okay? For any queries, you can comment in comment box. Thank you.